Welcome back. Now, in this video, we're gonna take a deep dive into the promotional planning worksheet. Now, the promotional planning worksheet is the second critical asset in creating your promotional calendar. So this is all about identifying your goals and leveraging your email list to achieve them. Pretty simple, right? It's kind of part strategic planning and part promotional planning, which really the two are one and the same. It's just taking a big number and breaking it down. Uh, it's really important and I'm excited to dive in. So uh, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at this goal. So 12 steps to creating a winning promotional calendar. Now the promotional planning worksheet that you'll see here is available in the asset list of this particular module. And we're gonna walk through filling this out in 12 steps. So the first step is pretty simple, right? Assuming you have some uh, strategic planning and you know where you want to be, uh, either next calendar year or just 12 months from now, depending on when you're filling this out. Don't think that you have to uh, wait if it's the beginning of the year or the middle of the year until next year to fill this thing out, all right? So where do you wanna be? Like we start with revenue, because at the end of the day, while we're moving customers down the customer journey, for a customer to become a customer, there's an exchange of money, and if they're gonna become a multi-buyer uh, and a really brand evangelist, there's typically several transactions and, a, and kind of a recurring theme of an exchange of money. So you have a business, right? You have a business or you work for a business. It's about generating revenue. So how are we going to leverage this asset to generate as much revenue as possible while still making sure that we're adding value to your subscribers? Well, we can't break that down until we know what your goals are. So you start with a 12 month revenue goal. Where do you want to be? Sometimes you're watching this or some of you may be watching this as um, an established business, right? You may have a uh, yearly and quarterly strategic planning sessions, and you may know not only what your goals are this year from a revenue standpoint, but next year, the year after that, and all the way out to five years, possibly longer. If that's you, fantastic. Fantastic, you can start knowing next year what your goals are, and you can make a decision on whether or not you want to leverage this promotional planning worksheet uh, just for email as a channel, or if you want to put it in play for the entire uh, marketing campaign of your business, right? If you, want to, if you want to bring in paid and any other levers you have to pull from the marketing aspect or just this channel. Now, you may be watching this as a startup and say, you know, I have no idea. I have no idea where I want to be in 12 months. And to that, I'd say, it's time to arbitrarily pick. At some point, you have to pick and arbitrarily plant a flag. You have to choose a target because with no target, then you always win even if you lose, right? If your goal is to generate as much money as possible from email marketing or any channel, then you will not generate as much money as possible because there will always be subjective reasoning on why you did not hit that goal. Well, I could only hit this much because this happened. So wherever you are, whatever stage company you are, now is the time to choose a number, whether it's arbitrary or whether it's decided on and approved by a board. Those are the ends of the spectrum and it does not matter. Now it's the time to put a number there. So if we say arbitrarily that next year is going to be 12 million, then we know that we need to build a promotional planning sheet that accounts for us starting in January at some random number, right? Probably not a million and building to 12 million in revenue. So let's use that as an example as we're going through this sheet. So Start with a 12 month revenue goal where you wanna be. For this example, we wanna be at $12 million in revenue. Now we need to think about before we start, before we start plotting in here, what's gonna happen from a revenue generation standpoint, from a, a, a promo standpoint, we need to think about non-revenue goals, all right? Non-revenue goals because where most email marketers fail or are handcuffed is when the, the channel, right, when your email list has to be leveraged to help hit non-revenue goals. Because that's kind of a two-part owie, right? It's, it's, it's an opportunity cost and it's a loss on one side. So maybe you're priming the pump, right? Maybe you're prepaying something that later will become revenue generating, but at the time, it's not. So you, one, lose the ability to generate revenue from that particular promo, 
and you're mailing something uh, else that takes its spot. So we need to think about that. So what are some examples of non-revenue goals? Well, you could want to launch a book, and, and I say you, uh, and it could be your company, right? It could be your boss. It could be your client. So somewhere along the line, this pretend company has a goal of launching a book. And let's say they want to launch a book uh, and it needs to release in August, but really the goal isn't to launch a book. The goal is to launch a book to be used for customer acquisition or client ac acquisition. So that book needs to hit the top of the charts. Well, there's kind of a proven strategy for doing that, especially if you have a captive and engaged audience, also known as an email list, right? An email list, you've got one, hopefully, or you wouldn't be here. But what would happen if we're down here on the launch date, we're probably gonna start pre-selling that book in June. So we're pre-selling the book, we wanna to get to the top of a list, so in June and July, we've got a lot of promotional lift. We're sending a lot of emails, and maybe people are buying, but they're not buying through our channel. They're buying through traditional book channels, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, and it's a pre-release. So maybe you get some of this money one day, maybe you don't, maybe your publisher gets it. But you know that at the end of the day, this is all building towards the launching of a book, which will be the ultimate business card, right? the ultimate credibility for you and, and bring you in floods of clients. So it will pay off one day, just not in uh, June or July when the heaviest promotional lift is there. So you have to note that now because if your goal is $12 million and you know that half of June and July are taken with non-revenue producing uh, promos to have something that hits in August, is it reasonable to believe that you'll hit a million dollars in revenue in June and July? I don't know, but it's something to think about, right? So that's the next thing you need to do, whether it's a book, whether you want to launch a podcast, maybe you're a physical, uh, you're a physical brick and mortar location and you're opening a new location and you need to start uh, awareness campaigns, right? You need to start building up awareness and excitement about a new brick and mortar location because when it opens, you probably want people to show up. Well, if it's opening in August and I'm talking about it in June, they're not gonna show up to that location and if they do, even if they did, it's not open. So you can't take their money. Non-revenue producing goal, right? We have to think about those in the beginning before we even start plotting uh, revenue producing goals or revenue producing campaigns. So next we're gonna look at holidays. Now, this is kind of a soapbox thing of mine. The internet retailer and the online publisher and all of the other businesses that have, uh, have grown up in the internet age that aren't used to traditional marketing, right? Creating a store flyer uh, and sending it out to the customers or handing it to them as they walk in the door, have lost uh, the have kind of lost the tradition of participating in holidays. Now I challenge you whether you're a business owner, uh, whether you're a consultant dealing with clients, or whether you're an employee and going through this to facilitate the marketing uh, for a business, look at holidays, right? There are tons of, of resources out there to tell you not only what the holiday, what the holidays are every month of the year, uh, but what themes are in those months. Even if it's a non-relevant holiday, I challenge you to participate in holiday promotions. And if you don't, whether you're B2B or B2C, uh, it does not matter, you're swimming upstream. See, major holidays produce so much inertia in the marketplace that people get caught up. It doesn't matter. And if you're their expert and you're not participating, if you're trying to, to siphon off and you're having a message that's not congruent with everyone else's message, then you're swimming upstream. If you have the same message, but you're the authority in their lives, then they will see yours over and above, all right? Over and above the noise in the marketplace. I urge you, as one of your action items in this particular module, to go in and pull a schedule of monthly holidays celebrated or observed in wherever you are at, and ask yourself, how many can I participate? In fact, I have a better question for you to ask. How can I be like a mattress store, right? How can I be like a mattress store? Now that may sound like a funny question uh, to, to ask yourself, but think about this, especially if you're here in the US. Mattress stores, like most furniture stores, but even over and above, mattress stores almost exclusively run promo, uh, promos, 
in a line with holidays. Now you tell me, what relevant holiday is there to a mattress store? There's none directly relevant. Maybe one of them could be uh, a New Year's resolution, if your resolution is to sleep more. Uh, but I'll tell you, that's never been my resolution, and I, I don't really know anyone else that, that's had that resolution outside of maybe, maybe a new mom. But you can't exactly participate in Mother's Day and talk to new moms, because Mother's Day is for all moms. However, mattress stores participate in almost every holiday because they know they need an excuse. They need an excuse to run a sale to get people to come in the door because whether they're buying the Tempur-Pedic or the sleep number or the one that they don't even have out on display, but it's sitting in a rack in the back of the store, they don't make a sale unless they get someone into the store and they leverage holidays to do that. Now, I don't suggest that you, unless you're a mattress store, go that far. But I do suggest you ask yourself, how can I participate in at least, at least five traditional holiday promotions a year? I guarantee you, if you can answer that question, you'll see a boost. Because you'll be paying attention to and going in flow with the seasonality that your customers and your prospects are already experiencing, instead of trying to swim against it. All right, so that's holiday promotions, and I told you that was kind of one of my things, so I'll, I'll jump off the soapbox now. But pick the ones you know that you're going, to, uh, you're going to participate in and slot those promos into the appropriate month, right? Uh, New Year's, if you're, if you're in fitness, health, fitness, weight loss, you're definitely in the New Year's resolution business. That one should go there. You're probably also in the uh, swimsuit season business, so maybe in April or May right? You're talking about get your swimsuit body. You're getting ready for summer. Um, so denote seasonality and holidays there. Slot annual promotions. What do you do every year or what have you done either intentionally or by accident year over year that's done really well, right? Done really, really well. We have a couple of things at Digital Marketer. Uh, we have our annual Traffic and Conversion Summit. Now, it's a large event. It's the largest conversion conference in North America and potentially the world. I'm, I'm not sure, uh, but I'm just going to say it. It's the largest conversion conference in the world. Um, we have a lot to do to fill that. Now, I know that it happens in February. If I don't start promoting in September and do a promotion in September, another promotion in October, a bigger promotion in November, and then a really big promotion in December, that I'm going to have seats left unfilled. Now, the event doesn't cost me any less if I have seats unfilled, so I have to make sure that I have that slotted in, right? In, in September, I'm going to start promoting Traffic and Conversion Summit. Now, just like that, uh, I've got three, four months, or three, four weeks out of this calendar that are gone. They're gone. Luckily, I know how much revenue those produce, and it's, it's good. We also have uh, our annual Black Friday Boot Camp. Every year, we put on a Black Friday Boot Camp, a full day's training. We donate 100% of the proceeds to charity. It's a set promo, so I know that that goes in November. We now have a, day, uh, a, a 12 days of deals that goes in December. We have a Black Friday sale that goes in November. These are annual promos and holidays that we participate in. As I start to plot these in here, they should have revenue associated with them, but they also are removing time from my promotional calendar. I can't say, well, I'm going to produce $3 million of my 12 in November, a million of it's going to come from set promos that I already have committed to. Now, out of that, i got a week left and I'm going to generate the other two million. Hopefully you see why that's a problem. That's not going to happen. You're going to miss. We have to keep these things in mind as we're filling uh, this promotional planning worksheet out. So next, seasonality. You need to understand seasonality just like you understand your, your holidays, right? What are your highs and lows from, from seasonality? When are people in your market winners, your ideal prospect, and your current buyers, when are they in a buying frenzy? And when are they not? When have they completely checked out? When is trying to sell to them the hardest it'll ever be in this calendar year? You need to understand those and you need to make sure that not only from a promotional uh, type of promotion you're putting over here, but also from your revenue projections you're putting over here. If it's your slow season, 
that better not be the month that you're planning on making up ground on your annual goal because you're probably going to miss, right? This is just starting out with projections. Projections, what do I have? Now we need to go back and revisit those non, uh, non-revenue goals and slot them into the appropriate month, right? So if you're doing this, your set promos are probably starting to fill up. You know what's happening here. You know when you only have a week out of the month or when you have a whole month to deal with to hit your goals. The next thing we need to do, because there's a reasonable expectation at this point that most of your set promos are filled in here, right? Most of your set promos are in this area over here. We need to start breaking out those revenue goals uh, into monthly items. Now, again, if you're in the health and fitness or if you're in the, the, the fitness or weight loss, you're going to be front loaded a lot here, a whole lot here. Now, if you're in the furniture or consulting business, right? Consulting business, you may be loaded at the end of the year. That may be your seasonal high uh, or one of them because businesses look for an additional tax credit. For you, you have a high service uh, fee or a high consulting fee that you can go in and, and you know that's, um, that's, a, that's something you can leverage here at the end of the year. But we need to denote seasonality when we're putting these goals in. Remember, you don't want to have a high revenue goal on a low seasonal sales uh, with the least amount of promotional calendar available because of set promos. That's the worst case scenario. You'd actually like the opposite of that. So let's go ahead and put those goals in by month. Next, we need to set revenue projections, all right? So if you don't have anything in your set promos, then you don't have any revenue coming from your email list yet, right? Nothing coming from your email list. Now, if you're doing this not as an email channel only, but looking at this uh, from a step back at the whole business, right? If you're, if you're breaking down the entire business sales goals here, you may say, well, um, we have, we kind of have, a recurring business or recurring revenue model, and that's good for half a million dollars a month. So I know that I'm gonna get half a million dollars from recurring billing, and honestly, because we're an established business, we're gonna do $250,000 a month just in normal, everyday business. Well, that's fantastic, because you can, even with no set promos, say, well, if the target here is two million, and I know I've got uh, $750,000 coming in and expected, then I have 1.25 million left. The good news is I have the entire promotional calendar to leverage to get it. That's the best case scenario, right? That's a good, good, good thing. The opposite is bad, remember. So we need to start filling these out and seeing, okay, if I'm going to, if I'm gonna hit 12 million, what am I behind? And not only what am I behind, but what am I behind every month, okay, every month? Now we need to subtract the expected from the target and fill in the remaining revenue needed. So after you're done with this portion of this sheet, what you will have is a goal, an expected revenue, and then you'll know what you need to make up and how much time on that calendar, if you're only leveraging your email list, you have to make it up in. Next, you need to brainstorm additional promotional ideas, right? If you have time left on your calendar, even if you've hit your budget, Right? Even if you know that my goal here is a million, uh, I'm definitely at a million, maybe above, and I have three weeks left in my promotional calendar where right now I'm planning on mailing nothing, then step one, uh, brainstorm ideas. Step two, adjust your goal. Right? Your goal is too low. But let's brainstorm additional promo ideas and list them here. That you're not committing to anything yet. We'll talk about how to come up with these different promotions and how to figure out which type of promotion you should be running to your list uh, a little bit later on. But right now, we're just trying to brainstorm ideas to go back to step number one and figure out how we can leverage this channel to get to our ultimate goal. Next, spot check and adjust. And this is so important. I've kind of had this theme throughout, but does it meet your goals? Is it achievable? If, again, if, if one of these months has three weeks out of four that are with set promos and two of those weeks are uh, are with non-revenue generating promos or with something uh, that you have an agreement with a strategic partner that maybe it's revenue generating, but you have to generate or you have to, to help promote their book before they'll promote yours. So not only is it not gonna generate revenue now, it's not gonna generate revenue for a long time and it's really paying it forward. 
if, if that's your month to have major revenue growth and the only asset that you're getting that from is this email list, it, it's not achievable, right? You're setting yourself up for failure and whether you're going to uh, your clients, whether you're going to, uh, whether you're going to investors, whether you're going to your board, whether you're going to your boss or whether you're really setting projections for yourself, the ability to set forecast and achieve projections is something that you need to learn, especially when you're leveraging uh, an asset as powerful as your email list. So I urge you to fill this sheet out. This should take a long time because it's hard, but it should take a long time the first time you do it. The second time you do it, it should be so much easier. The third time, you're filling, you ideally, if you're doing a good job, you're filling in mostly set promos and you're cherry picking the best emails uh, and the best promos from the ones you sent last year to achieve your goals. Now, the last thing that you're going to do is list additional needs. And I told you that this is more than just uh, calendar planning. This is more than just strategic planning. Really, this should set goals and initiatives for your company. If you have a goal and you're leveraging uh, this channel to achieve it and you can't achieve it, whether it's because uh, you're out of things to sell, right? You can't figure out how to sell your one product this many different ways and achieve your goals of customer acquisition or monetization. Then you need to go into product creation mode or acquisition mode, right? If you have uh, a fully developed product line, but there's no way that you can achieve your goals with just this channel, then it's time to look at the, at the addition of other channels. The goals in the promotional planning worksheet should dictate what projects you tackle as a company and when. All right, let me say that again. What projects you tackle as a company and when. If you're launching a book here and you need to start promoting here, that should tell you when you need to, I don't know, write the book, build the page, write the promotional copy. This can inform almost every decision you make from a company standpoint and make sure that you're not wasting your time on projects that will never see the light of day. It'll eliminate passion projects forever and it'll make sure that you make the highest possible revenue for your company, whether it's from email marketing or just in general. Okay, that's how important it is. Now remember, this promotional planning worksheet is available in the assets area. I would urge you to stop this right now, go through and fill this out. It should take a while and it should be hard, but that's okay because it's going to inform the rest of your business. It's going to inform what you do next year, so it's totally worth it. Now in the next video, we're gonna come back and tell you how to take what you've just put together and break that down into a 30-day promotional calendar. So I'll see you in the next video.